Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my makeup collection if I didn't have a YouTube channel. So these are products that I believe would definitely be in my makeup collection even if I didn't do this crazy thing called YouTube. So if you would like to see these amazing products that are so tried and true and just so good and also see me do this look as well, then just keep watching. Hair's a little poofier than normal. I just went for a walk and the humidity got the best of me. <laughs> uh, so the first person that I actually saw do this video was Jamie Page. I'm not sure if she created the tag, but I'll list some of the ones that I've seen down below. But this was highly requested to do. Obviously, me having a YouTube channel, there obviously are a lot of products that I bought specifically for my YouTube channel and not personally because I wanted it. So I was thinking, like, if I didn't have a YouTube channel, what products would I have in my collection? And I was thinking in terms of how wearable they are and how versatile they were for occasions. So I just kind of picked products that I really felt like are tried and true in my collection. I always grab for, I always feel comfortable grabbing for, and they just have the Best selection of colors. I've always been the person to have a very large makeup collection. Like my collection has always been a lot, like way more than I needed. Of course with YouTube, my collection exploded. Looking down at my collection right now, I don't know how I would survive. <laughs> but I definitely went with products that I really do feel like are so versatile for whatever you're doing and they just fulfill so many of the needs that I personally have. So let's start off with primer. I only picked one primer and that is the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. This is honestly just the best primer I've ever used for my skin. So I have quite thirsty skin. It's quite dry. I would say my skin runs more normal to dry but I just prefer a lot of hydration on my skin before makeup because nothing looks crustier than literal crusty dry skin underneath foundation. So for me I love this because it's so lightweight on the skin and it's so moisturizing. It literally just feels like a moisturizer. So if I did not have a YouTube channel this would definitely be the primer that I would have in my collection. For foundation I picked two. The first one is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD foundation. I've just used this for years. It's so versatile. I love the color of it. It's a more medium coverage and this is kind of my favorite everyday foundation and then I also picked out the Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. These two are kind of similar in that I feel like they're very lightweight. They give medium coverage but this one is a little bit more special occasion-y for me because it's a little bit more pricey and I feel like the finish is a little bit more velvety on the skin as opposed to this one which is just more fresh and skin like. Both are really great but I think these would be the two foundations that I would have in my collection if I was not a YouTuber. We'll go with Luminous Silk today. I'm in the mood to play with Luminous Silk. I have mine in the shade 4.5 and then I wear R330 in the Makeup Forever. I might have gotten a little bit too much sun so oopsie. And I'm just using my Kaleido sponge to blend this in and what I really like about the Luminous silk foundation is that you can really decide how much coverage you want. I mean it does give you like a medium coverage overall but if you just put the tiniest amount of product on it really is such a natural look just to kind of even the skin out and obviously the more you put the more put together and perfected your skin will look. Both of these foundations I also chose because they're both extremely comfortable on the skin like I don't feel my makeup when I wear these foundations. They just feel so lightweight and then they just <laughs> make you look so good. For eyebrows, the winner is going to be the Benefit Precisely My Brow. And I think why I love this so much is one, it is so extremely thin and I just love having the ability to create very fine hair-like strokes. But also because Benefit is everywhere, I feel like they're in every retail store. So they're just so easy to get a hold of and they follow you everywhere. I feel like I always get samples of these and they always just work so good. It's just a reliable basic eyebrow pencil that's nice and thin, has the perfect color range and just given how easily accessible it is, I definitely see myself using this. And plus, you know, if I didn't have a YouTube channel, I would definitely still be watching YouTube channels. And this one is so widely known and talked about that I know I probably would have ended up 
with this one. And it's still just amazing. And then for eyebrow gel, I've been using this since the beginning of time, ever since I first started doing my eyebrows. And this is the ABH Clear Brow Gel. It really is just a tried and true in my collection and I don't want to be without it. I have since discovered a lot of really great brow gels, but there's something about this one that I definitely have an emotional attachment to. So this one would always have to be in my collection. And what's great about brow gel is that you don't really need to have eyebrow product on to use it. You can just use it on days that you're not wearing any makeup just to tame the caterpillars, you know? So definitely would need to have a brow gel. For concealers, one of the most versatile, wearable, comfortable, pretty concealers for me is the Armani Power Fabric Concealer. I have mine in the shade four. This is just the ideal everyday concealer for me. It gives you good coverage. I do have discoloration underneath my eyes, but it's not really a deep concern for me. Like I like just a little bit of concealer just to kind of open up the eyes a little bit, but it's never been an area that I really targeted. I think this concealer is so easy to apply. It blends out almost by itself. You need a little to no work. Another concealer that I was thinking about was the Too Faced Born This Way foundation. I don't know where mine is. I couldn't find it, so I just pulled this one out, but the Too Faced Born this way is another one that I would have in my collection as well but this power fabric just does the job and look how gorgeous and natural my skin looks right now so perfect so powder for me would definitely be the Maybelline fit me fair light powder to me this is still just one of the best powders on the market, high-end luxury drugstore. It's one of the best. I feel like it's one of the most perfecting powders. I love baking with this powder. Do people still bake anymore? I don't know, but I really like lathering on this powder because it just looks so good and it's so smoothing, you guys. I just... It's so good. But yeah, this definitely would be in my collection anytime, every time. Like my collection's this big, I'm always gonna have this powder. My collection is tiny, this will be the only powder that I have. I love it so much. See, like I just feel like my skin is so much more smooth now. So the bronzer that I would have in my collection would have to be the Marc Jacobs Tantastic Giant Omega Bronzer. And this boy is expensive. And I know if I didn't have a YouTube channel, I definitely would not have a ton of expensive products just a select few like I've picked for today's video but you just get so much product with this bronzer literally the most perfect color it's neutral but it also shades the face but it also warms the face at the same time I just feel like this is one of the most versatile shades as far as bronzers go it's fantastic quality you never really are going to run out of it and it's just a solid bronzer and if this was the only bronzer in my collection I really would be happy because it's so beautiful you guys see that I haven't used this bronzer in a while it's so good Oh my goodness. Let's move on to eyes. I picked out the Too Faced Eyeshadow Insurance. This is just a primer that I've always had in my collection because it's good. I swear it does help the longevity of my makeup and stop the creasing. If you were on YouTube like 10 years ago, this was the bee's knees everybody used. Either Too Faced Shadow Insurance or Urban Decay Primer Potion. I was definitely a shadow insurance believer and I still am. I mean, I don't have have big problems when it comes to eye makeup longevity, but I do find that this actually legitimately works. Eyeshadow palettes. The one thing about me is I've always loved eyeshadow palettes. I've always had a large eyeshadow palette collection. That's just me. That's just who I am. That's just how I've always been. So I picked out four eyeshadow palettes. All of these speak to me on a personal level, like deep in my soul. These are my colors. So the first one that I picked out was the Artist Couture Supreme Nudes. This is just a a glam neutral palette. These are the colors that I would reach for on an everyday basis. You know, if I had to, I would not be mad about it. The quality is so buttery smooth and I just feel so comfortable reaching for this palette. I also picked out the ABH Soft Glam, of course, because this has the most perfect colors, the most perfect quality. And I know if I didn't have a YouTube channel, I know I would need to own an ABH palette and this one would definitely be the one that I would go for. I also picked out the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. 
palette. I love luxury beauty, what can I say? But this is like the best value and it has the most perfect array of colors. You have some fun options, you have neutral options, you have bronzy options, you have warm options. This palette has grown on me so much ever since I purchased it and it's one of the best and I think if you're a beginner to eyeshadow, especially if you're looking into these more luxurious makeup brands, I highly recommend the Metropolis palette. And then the last one, I've always been in love with Kathleen Lights and I really have always loved this palette. I don't even think this is still available, but this is the Zodiac palette from ColourPop that Kathleen Lights collaborated on. And I just love this because it has those neutrals that I'm so extremely comfortable with, but it also has a lot of fun colors that you can play with just to spice up your look. I've always preferred neutral tones, but I always really enjoyed putting in special pops every now and then so this really is also me as a palette so i feel like this collection of four palettes overall they're quite neutral but they do have their pops as well and these are just some go-to palettes i know you're like where's the pat mcgrath morgan if i'm being completely honest if i didn't have a youtube channel i wouldn't have even found pat mcgrath the price would have scared me away <laughs> but very very happy with these four so which one do i want to use today i've done a lot of soft glam on my channel so I'm gonna put that up and I think I've done a lot of Metropolis yeah okay since the Zodiac's not available anymore I'm not gonna use it so that leaves us with Supreme Nude this is the one I kind of wanted to play with anyways I don't think I've done a full tutorial on my channel with this one yet I don't I might have but anyways let's just do it um we're gonna start off with eccentric right here oh my gosh you guys I never pull these mirror things off so I'm using a MAC 224 and I love this mustardy shade. I think it's so pretty. And the shadow quality here, by the way, you will not be disappointed by. Everything is just really good about this palette. And this is a palette that, given the collection that I actually do have, I didn't think that I would need, so I passed on it initially. Let me tell you, that was a mistake because this palette is perfection. It's quickly rose to one of my favorite palettes ever. I'm also gonna run that along my lower lash line so next up i'm gonna take aesthetic this one is a uh, chocolatey brown so it has just that little tinge of red to it but it still leans a little bit more neutral and you know it's a good palette when i feel comfortable digging into these dark browns and not worrying that i'm gonna get too much payoff and not be able to blend it out like look at this it's just doing the work for me. Build that up along the lower lash line as well. And then I want to put lavish all over my lid because I love these two colors together. So just look how beautiful and glam this shade is. It's incredible. And I think that's all I'm going to do as far as eyeshadow today. I just really love this simple gold look. I don't think I've done a look like this quite yet with this palette and it's so simple. Love it, but highly recommend Supreme Nudes if you are interested. For eyeliner, I picked my tried and true MAC Black Track Fluid Line. Sometimes I try and trick myself and tell myself that I love a liquid eyeliner pen, but when it comes down to it, I just love my trusty Black Track Fluid Line. It's the best. I have the most control with a pot liner and I really do feel like it stays so I have to dig for my favorite brush for years I've always used the MAC 210 brush to apply we're gonna fast forward through this because I cannot speak and do this okay you guys I swear I always get the best wings when I use a pot liner so mascara I actually have two I only have one to show you today but I am so in love with the Pat McGrath fetish eyes mascara it's been one of my favorites ever since I got my hands on it the other one that I love that I don't have today is the Essence Lash Princess. I just, mine got old so I threw it out but I do plan on repurchasing it once I cycle through that mascaras that I do need to go through but those are my two favorite. Lash Princess is only five dollars. Pat McGrath is a little bit more expensive but those are definitely my top two favorite mascaras. I love mixing them, blending them, but also using them on their own. I find the Essence to be really lengthening. I just like how the Essence builds on itself and then I like the Pat McGrath because I feel like it gives me some more volume. Both I highly recommend. The one thing with Pat McGrath though is it can get a little bit flaky so just be prepared for that. I just love how it makes my lashes look so much that I put up with it but Lash Princess doesn't get flaky if you hate that. Okay so let's move 
move on to blush. You guys know blush is like my favorite part of any makeup routine. So I picked two blush palettes. I love a good blush palette. I love variety and I picked out my two favorite ones. So the first one is by NARS and it is the Overlust Cheek Palette. Now this is a part blush, part highlighting palette. Not really moved by the highlighters, but I just love the colors of this blush palette so much that it still is worth it to me. These are the most perfect wearable blush colors. They give you a little sheen to the cheek and I'm sure this is going to be limited edition so it's going to be gone pretty soon but this is one of my favorite blush palettes of all time. I love the colors. They're just so perfect. And then the other one, this is only available at select retailers. Hopefully it's still available. This is the Jouer Bouquet D'Amour palette and even if they don't have this specific palette. I love their individual blushes as well. They just have the most beautiful colors. This one I like because it has such a large array of colors that are already existing in their line. So this is kind of a taste of their entire blush collection, which I love. Pink blushes are my jam and I just love how the majority of these blushes are pink. I think today, kind of looking at my face, we're going to go in with the NARS and I think this warm shade right here is going to match better with my look. So you can see it kind of almost looks like it wouldn't be pigmented and then you get it on your cheeks and your cheeks just look so beautiful. Oh, I love this palette so much. I can't stop raving about it and I'm really scared that it actually is going to be discontinued one day because it's so bomb. Look how pretty that was. As far as highlighter, this one was a no-brainer for me as well. The Dior Backstage Glow Face Palette. This is a really great taste into luxury highlighters that is at a relatively more affordable price point and the formulas are so smooth on the skin. It's not a formula that's going to emphasize texture. You get a beautiful glow. You can build it up if you want an intense glow or you can just put a little bit on and spread it out for more of a natural glow. Definitely one of the highlighter palettes that I take with me on vacation. The shade that I'm dipping into right now is one of my all-time favorite highlighters. You can see just how glowy and pretty and smooth it is to the the skin. You also have this light shade if you want something really beaming. This is fun if you're wearing a pink blush. I still use this as a highlighter, but it just kind of blends in so seamlessly to pink blush. Just the best. I always am so excited when I can pull this palette out. And if I had a limited collection, I would still have this in so good. For setting spray, I just love the classic MAC Fix Plus. The one I currently have is a coconut scent, but any MAC Fix Plus, I love the scent. I love how it refreshes my makeup. It's truly a classic. It's overpriced water, yes, but it's magical. Mostly for setting sprays, I would say I look for setting the makeup, making the makeup melt and look more natural, and I really do feel like this does a really good job with that. It's easy to get a hold of. It's just a classic. You can't go wrong with Fix Plus. So while my face is drying, I picked out my all-time favorite everyday lashes. Can't live without my Coco Misha lashes, you guys. They're the best for my eye shape and my preferences. So I have a smaller eyes, and I know those almond kind of fox eyes are in right now. I do have an almond shape eye. I am half Asian, but I actually prefer a lash that is longer in the center to round my eyes a bit more. Sometimes I do want to go for that elongated eye look, but for the most part, for me, I find the longer in the center lashes to be a little bit more flattering on me, unless, I, like I said, I'm going for that look. So I like these because they're super wearable, but you also can kind of pull these off with glam looks as well, but they look very natural. They're very thin. Well, they don't look natural, but <laughs> they're very thin, easy to apply, and I just think they look so good, whether you're wearing a natural look or a glam look. Okay, so see, I just, I love these lashes. They're the best. For lips, I picked out two lip liners, two lipsticks, and one gloss. So the two lip liners I picked out, the first one is BFF. This is kind of my everyday, ignore this gold swatch, but this is kind of my everyday favorite nude lip liner. It just is kind of my lip color, but better. It's perfect for contouring. And then if I want something a little bit deeper and more brown based, because I really enjoy kind of brown neutral lips, I love the Pat McGrath Super 
natural contour is also very good but I think one of my contours lost in my purse but these two have been for the past year I'm using these non-stop I think we'll go a little bit more brown base today so I'm gonna put on supernatural from Pat McGrath I really don't know how Pat McGrath does this formula because it's so creamy to apply but then it dries down and it like doesn't budge it's incredible ColourPop I feel like has an amazing really creamy formula but it doesn't dry down like the Pat McGrath does both are really fantastic but the extra bucks you pay for the Pat McGrath really show <laughs> and then for lipsticks my all-time favorite lipstick formula is Charlotte Tilbury so I picked out two colors from Charlotte Tilbury I have my all-time fave everyday nude which is Hepburn honey right here this is the kissing formula so it has a little bit of a shine and it's it's my good luck lipstick I wear it to every interview every special event I think it's stunning and then if I want something a little bit more my natural lip color but better just for every day I really like pillow talk it took me a while to get on board with the pillow talk lipstick because I knew it was so popular and I never saw anything special about it until I started liking the look of having just a nice light pink lip and then I love it for every day so I'm gonna use Hepburn honey because I just think it'll go perfect with my eyes the perfect nude Am I right? Like I just, me in a lipstick. <laughs> and then for lip gloss, of course, I went with Fenty. I hmm, Actually, I was in a tough battle with Pat McGrath, but I think versatility wise, I love me some Fenty. This one's in the shade Fussy. I think I prefer the Universal. That one is in my purse right now, but this one's just as good. It's just slightly more pink. I'm going to put just a dab for a little extra little extra juiciness but mm, Fenty has such a good formula I don't know if I like Fenty or Pat McGrath better they're different though this one is more like throw on mindlessly whereas Pat McGrath she has such an amazing finish and color range it's really difficult to decide between the two but as far as every day a very minimal collection I think this would be the lip gloss that I would have all right so I'm gonna yeah and I'll be right back you guys love it when I have lion's hair but it's a bit much. All right, you guys, so those are the products that I would have in my collection if I didn't have a YouTube channel. Realistically though, I know I would have a lot more, but these would be my tried and true products. I just know I can always fall back on no matter what the occasion is or what time of day it is. So I hope you guys enjoyed this collection. Let me know, those of you who don't have a YouTube channel, is this the kind of collection you would have? Would you have this many items? And would you have the items that I featured? I wanna know, comment down below, let's get a conversation going. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.